Greetings all. Tonight we're going after the Whirlpool Galaxy. Now the Whirlpool Galaxy is a grand spiral galaxy. That just means it's real easy to make out the spiral arms in it. It's about 31 million light years away from Earth. And what makes this unique is there are kind of two galaxies there and they're interacting with each other. It almost looks like the big one is eating the smaller galaxy. The smaller galaxy being uh, Anyhow, the smaller galaxy has its own NGC number. I forgot what it is now. Uh, but sometimes they're classified together as the Whirlpool Galaxy, in which case uh, they're called M51A for the large galaxy, M51B for the small galaxy. Now we'll be shooting these obviously in broadband. I don't know if there's going to be a HA signal there or not, but we're going to take some HA frames and see if there's anything there. If it is, then of course we'll uh, put it into the image. But tonight, the Whirlpool Galaxy. All right, here we set, ready to go after the Whirlpool Galaxy. Uh, what I have done, you see I've got um, Stellarium called up. I've turned on the mount. Uh, that's turned on. I connected up PHD2, although it's not looping. And I'm just about to open Neener. But before I open Neener, let me show you the plan for tonight. Uh, we are polar aligned. I just got the polar alignment done. So right now we're pointed in the park position right up here at the North Celestial Pole. This is Polaris here. Uh, ready to go on the Whirlpool Galaxy. Now let me show you how to find the Whirlpool Galaxy. You see here is the Big Dipper. So you come down here to this last star in the Big Dipper. That's called Alcade. And then you go out this direction just a little bit. And so right here sets the Whirlpool Galaxy. So you see how you find it. The Big Dipper, go to the handle, and then go out just a little bit right here. Uh, there you go. I, I made a good click. So there's the Whirlpool Galaxy. Let's zoom in and take a look real, real quick what it looks like in the Stellarium. Uh, there you go. Like I talked about earlier, you see the larger galaxy interacting with the smaller one. Kind of looks like it's uh, eating it. Uh, maybe it is, maybe it isn't, but you can read about that science on the internet. Tonight, we're just going to try and take a picture of it. What we're going to do for our navigation plan, we're going to go right here from the North Celestial Pole, right on up here to the star Alcade, the last star in the Big Dipper. We'll do our focus and mount synchronization here, and then just a short jaunt on up to the Whirlpool Galaxy. So let's turn Neener on and make this stuff happen. Okay, so it offers me a couple of different profiles, but tonight, of course, we're using the Celestron 8SC because we're going after a galaxy. So that's the profile we'll choose. And I've got a lot of the settings already preset in uh, Neener, the focal length, uh, plate solving settings, all that stuff. So here we are. Let's go ahead and hook up the camera. And we'll get it started cooling. And I'm going to go down to minus 15 degrees tonight. Camera's cooling. Now we'll hook up the filter wheel. That's the right one because I can see all of my filters in there. Let's hook up the focuser. Uh, there we go. Don't have a rotator. I do want to get one of those. Uh, the telescope. Uh, I'm going to import uh, these coordinates from the telescope to Neener because my telescope has a GPS on it. There we go. Now I'm unable to connect at this point. I still have to figure out why. But I'll show you how I'll connect uh, later on. Uh, as for the auto guider, I'm not going to hook up PHD2 yet. 
because I need to do the calibration manually because when Nina does the calibration for PHD2, it always fails out. So I'm going to get guiding calibrated and at that point I will turn command of PHD2 over to Nina. So I'm not going to turn it on just at this point, but everything else is ready to go. So if we go to the Sky Atlas, I don't think it's going to find Alcade. Let's try it. It doesn't seem to know where stars are at. No, it didn't find it. But let me show you what I can do. If I go to the Imaging tab and click on this star up here, it gives me some manual focus targets here. Uh, and we can go and select uh, Alcade right here out of there. And let's actually, uh, let's drag this over to this window over here. Uh, there they are. But notice that the slew is grayed out. So I can't slew to Alcade from this position. And I haven't figured out why that is yet. It's like Nina doesn't know that the telescope is awake and ready to go. Now I can go down here, turn the scope on so that it's now actually moving and awake and tracking. But even so, Nina still doesn't know that it's ready to go. If I go back here to equipment, telescope, uh, it, it still won't let me connect it. You see, it stays grayed out. So I haven't figured that out yet. If any of you know why this is and how I can get the telescope to connect at this point, please let me know. But I'm going to show you how I do know how to connect it. I'm going to select Alcade in the Stellarium. I'm going to go to the Framing tab. And uh, here I'm going to import the, connect, the uh, coordinates from Stellarium. So it's going to pull in Alcade. And there it is there, Alcade. Of course, this is the database picture, not my own picture. But now Alcade is under the hammer here. So now I can click, click slew, and the telescope will slew. It will make its best effort to go to Alcade, but it's not going to plate solve over to Alcade. It'll make one attempt and stop. So let me show you what that looks like. And there goes the telescope, and I can tell you, it is going in the right direction to point at Alcade. So that's a good sign. So it went to where it thinks Alcade is at, and it stopped. Now you see it stopped. It's done. It made, it's made its best guess to get on Alcade in one try. So that's what that slew button does for you. Now let me show you what else it does for you. Now that we have slewed the telescope, I can go back to the equipment tab and now it will allow me to hook up the telescope. You see that? So now it's connected. So at this point I could now go and select the manual focus targets, Alcade, and now the slew to target is enabled. But alas, we have already done that. So I'm missing a connection here somewhere. I, I know I've just got to uh, be smarter than Nina to figure this out, but I'm not yet. I'll get there though. All right, so Alcade is, the scope thinks it's pointed to Alcade. Let's take a picture and see where it really is. And I can almost guarantee you that it is not going to be on Alcade. Because hardly ever does it get where you want it to go on the first try. Okay, here we go. On the image tab, imaging, you see that's the picture it took. You see, we're not on Alcade. I didn't think we were. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and turn off HFR just for now to make the plate solving quicker. So HFR calculation is off. Now let's go to plate solving. The scope is not in the right spot. It made its best guess, but it wasn't good enough. So we're going to turn synchronize on, reslew to target on, and now when we press the go button, it will now plate solve its way on over to Alcade. So here we go. It's taking a picture to see where it really is at. Okay, now it's doing a plate solve. And the plate solve failed. Why is that? I don't know why the plate solve failed. 
that's going to be a problem. So let's go figure out why plate solving did not work. I should have seen some stars in this picture, and there are no stars there. Why are there no stars? You know what? Okay, let me tell you why the plate solve didn't work, and let me tell you why you don't see any stars here. That's because I did not take off the lens cover. So let me go take off the lens cover and see if it works a little better. Okay, the lens cover is off. So let's take a picture. There it is. Now we see some stars. Okay, let's see if plate solving will work. I'm going to cancel the plate solving. So sync is on, slew is on. So now when I click go, it should plate solve on over to Alcade. Taking the picture to see where it's at. Now it's doing a plate solve. Okay, the plate solve worked because it knows it's not in the right spot. It's doing a quick adjustment. Now it's going to settle. Then it's going to take another picture to see if it got it right this time. And my guess is that it did. Plate solving. Okay, it stopped doing anything, which says to me it got it right. We can go down here and double check. Yep, the error here is within the margin of error that I told it. So it thinks it's on Alcade. Let's go see, is it really? Yeah, there it is, there's Alcade. So uh, once you take your lens cover off, it works a lot better. So now I'm going to turn on live view and go put, no, put on the Batnov mask and we'll do our focus. Okay, Batnov mask is on and there we go. That focus is really close, but I think I can make it slightly better. It looks like I can move it just a frog's hair, move this central spike just a frog's hair to the right and uh, get it dead on. So uh, we're going to go try to do that. All right. So let's watch it. I'm going to I'm going to go right now. There's a 50 50 chance I'm going to move it the right direction. Let's see what happens if I click the right arrow. I can't tell yet. I'll click it again. I'm counting my clicks because if I moved it the wrong way, I'm going to have to move it back the right way. That's two clicks I gave it. I think we are there because look at this central spike. Doesn't that look like it's exactly in between uh, the, cro the cross now? I'm going to say that's focused right here. So now we're going to go and find the Whirlpool Galaxy. Now I believe the Sky Atlas will find the Whirlpool Galaxy. So let's go to the Sky Atlas tab, type in Whirlpool, and see if it finds it. Look there, it did. All right, so we're gonna go set as tart, or well, let's first, you know what? I don't care about framing assistant because this is a galaxy, uh, it's going to be, it's not going to take up the whole frame. And since this is the first night, I really don't care about orientation. So we're just going to go set. At, now, on further nights, we would go here and make sure our camera rotation is correct to match the initial night rotation. But we don't care about that tonight. This is the first night. So we'll go set as sequence target. Okay, and now we're, now we're on our sequence tab. We have the Whirlpool Galaxy in here. Uh, there it is, M51. Now, uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn on Start Guiding because I, I do want it to start guiding once it gets on the Whirlpool Galaxy. We do want to slew the target, and we do want to center the target. So that's all good. Now we just need to talk about the frames that we want to take. So real quick, I'll go put in the imaging plan that I want to start with on the Whirlpool Galaxy. So this is what I'm going to go with at first, and this is strictly experimental. I want to make sure these are all going to be good, and if they are, then we'll put in the imaging plan that we're going to run the rest of the night with. Here we go. When I, when I click uh, Go, it should 
plate solve on over to the Whirlpool Galaxy. It should start guiding. And once all that's done, it should begin this sequence. Now, before I do that, I'm just going to make sure that the telescope is still hooked up. It is. Sometimes it unhooks itself. All right, here we go. Okay, what's the, oh, I, for, I didn't, uh, I didn't give, I didn't give Nina control of PhD two. I said I was going to. So let's see. PhD2 connect. Okay, now Nina has control of PhD2. So now it should uh, go as planned. And there it does, goes. It just made that quick slew from Alcade up to where it thinks the M51 Galaxy's at. Oh, you know what? Doggone it. I forgot to turn off live view. So I may have just froze up my camera. So let me go see if I can turn it live view off. Uh, hopefully I can get it turned off. If not, I'm gonna have to shut it all down and restart it again. I've done this before. Uh, I may have found the only way to crash Nina. Okay, I'm trying real hard to turn off live view and it's not turning off. Let me take a picture and see what happens. It's probably going to error out, but we'll see. Yep, you see it's stuck in downloading. Okay, but if I cancel it. Okay, there we go. It looks like uh, looks like I tricked live view into turning off. So now maybe it'll work. Let's take a picture and see what happens. Okay, it took a picture. And look at there. There's a Whirlpool Galaxy. That's a one second exposure, friends. One second exposure right there. I think this is going to work. All right, so we're going to uh, turn it all over to Nina and let her do her magic. Now, it thinks it's on target. So even though it says slew, it didn't go anywhere. Uh, now it's going to take a picture to plate solve. And it's starting guiding, so it thinks it's on the whirlpool, and we do too, because we see it there. Uh, it's going to guide on multiple stars, because that's the way I set it up. Guiding is going. And again, I have four second exposures, because with this bright full moon, if I do anything less than four seconds, the guide camera, all it sees is washed out white. So I have to do four seconds for it to see any stars. All right. And Nina is already exposing. It's into the uh, first picture we told it. I'm going to let this go, and I will come back with you and take a look at the first luminance picture as it comes in. And I figured out, even though this line down here is highlighted, that's not the line that's running. It's, it actually started in the right spot, and it's doing our luminance uh, exposure up here. So I'll be back when this uh, luminance exposure is coming in. Okay, we've got about five seconds for our first three minute luminance to come in. Let's watch it come in together. There it is. How about that? There it is, our first three minute luminance exposure. I don't know about y'all, but I'm okay with that. So I will again be back with you to review the red, green, blue, and the HA when they come in. Of course, our big question is, how much HA signal are we going to get? Okay, here's our first red image that just came in. There's a three-minute red filter. Okay, we're about five seconds away from our first green filter. Let's uh, watch that come in together. Okay, there's our green right there all right let's watch our first blue image come in it's coming in about right now okay there's our first uh three minute blue right there i, I see actually i see a little more signal in the galaxy itself than i did uh on the green or the red uh, but there it is and we're now going on the ha now, no surprises so far. 
This is about what I expected to see. But what I'm unsure of now is what kind of HA signal, what kind of narrowband hydrogen signal are we going to get on the Whirlpool Galaxy? And to be frank with you, I don't know. But we're about to find out. All right, here's about three seconds for our first uh, hydrogen exposure to come in. Let's see what it looks like. Okay, there's our HA exposure. I got to tell you, that's, uh, that's more signal than I was expecting. So I think what this tells us is that we do need to go ahead and shoot this target to uh, NHA as well as broadband. So now that we know that, uh, that's a surprisingly uh, good signal for HA. Now that for a galaxy, now that we know that, uh, let's go and adjust our imaging plan. Okay, folks, <clears throat> one more thing I'll show you. You may have noticed, maybe you didn't, but on my pre uh, sequence plan before, I forgot to turn on dithering. Uh, because of the longer exposures I'm taking, I do want to dither every frame. So I did go back and turn dithering on. So just an update lest you think that I'm not dithering. 